Whenever we're running a program on our computer, the program is stored in RAM as a list of instructions. And in order to execute each instruction, we have to fetch it from RAM. Uh, so for example, in, in the 8-bit computer that, that we're building, a program will normally start at address 0, and we'll you know, fetch that and execute you know, whatever instruction is in address 0. Uh, then we'll go to address 1 and, and fetch that and, and execute that, and then address 2, address 3, 4, 5, and so on. And so we've got to have a way to keep track of which address we're on, and, and the way that we do that is with the program counter. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what the program counter is, how it works, and we'll go ahead and build it. So of course, as, as the name implies, the program counter needs to be able to count. And of course, we've seen in, in previous video that we can build a binary counter using uh, JK flip-flops. So a counter like this that counts in binary uh, is definitely going to be a, an important part of our program counter. And, and in fact, our program counter is going to be a 4-bit counter uh, similar to, to this because our, the, the memory that we built uh, has a 4-bit address. But in many ways, the program counter also works a lot like a register, like the A register or, or B register. You know, it, it stores a value. Uh, un unlike you know, the, the A register, general purpose register, like, like the A register, the, the value that the program counter stores is all, always has a specific meaning. It's, it's the address of the next instruction we're executing. But like any other register, it, you know, it, it needs to be able to put that value out on the bus. Um, we, we might want to be able to read a value from the bus and, and instead of just counting in order, be able to jump to a different address arbitrarily by putting some other value into the program counter. And so the program counter has uh, a few uh, control signals going into it. Uh, so one is this uh, program counter out, and that works just like the A register out or the B register out. It tells the program counter, put your whatever value you're storing onto the bus. And when I say storing, uh, you know, the counter like this, you see, well, it's counting, uh, but if, if we stop the counting by disconnecting the clock, you see it's storing a value. It's storing, in this case, the value 3. You know, 0, 0, 1, 1 is, is 3 in binary. So, you know, the program counter is going gonna, is gonna to store a value, um, and of course, we want to be able to put that value out on the bus using this program counter out. And so when, whenever we enable that signal, the contents of that program counter will be, will be asserted out onto the bus, and then some other part of the computer, for example, the memory address register, uh, can then latch in whatever that, that address, or whatever that value is, into that memory address register. We also want the program counter to be able to read values from the bus, because we don't just want to count. We don't always want to execute instruction 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in order. Uh, in some cases, we might want to uh, jump around if we want to have a loop in our program, for example. Maybe we want to execute instruction 0, 1, 2, 3, and then when we get to instruction 4, we want to go back to instruction 0 and just run a loop like that. So we need to have some way of not just counting, but being able to put some other value into the program counter. And so to do that, it works very similarly to uh, any other register where we have uh, some sort of in control signal that says take whatever's on the bus and latch it into the value that you're storing. So in this case, that's the, the jump signal. And so whenever we enable this jump signal, it says take whatever's on the bus, or at least four bits worth of it, the four least significant bits of the bus, because this is a four-bit counter, not an eight-bit uh, register like these other things. Take those four bits and put it into the program counter. And then that'll be the next address that we execute. So this jump signal works a lot like the A register in signal or the B register in signal, instruction register in signal, RAM in, anything like that is taking the value from the bus and putting it into this uh, you know, register, if you will. And so the program counter does work a lot like a register, but of course it's also a counter. So it does need to be able to count, just like this. Um, and of course we don't want it to count on every clock cycle. So right, this is clock, every, time, every time there's a clock pulse, uh, this is counting. And we don't want the program counter to do to, to count every clock pulse. We just want it to count, or, or essentially increment, um, you know, once per instruction cycle. And an instruction uh, might take multiple clocks to, to execute. And so this last signal here, this count enable input uh, signal, allows us to enable the program counter to, to count. Uh, so whenever this is, is active, the program counter will, will actually increment on each clock cycle. And so we can, we can activate this, this input when we want to advance to the next instruction, let the program counter count up by one, and then disable it so that it doesn't continue to increment while we're executing that instruction. And then when we're ready to execute the next instruction, uh, we can go ahead and increment it again. So our program counter is going to be based on this, this simple binary counting circuit using four JK flip-flops. Uh, but we're, we're also going to need some additional logic to, uh, 
to handle our, our output uh, and our jump, you know, our ability to load in a value from the bus uh, and, this, and this enable uh, option. So to make things a little bit simpler, I'm gonna use the 74LS161, which is a four bit binary counter, uh, synchronous four bit binary counter. Synchronous just means it counts using a clock. And if we look at what's inside the 74LS161, we've got these four JK flip flops, very similarly to what we have in the binary counter that, that we built before. But we've also got a bunch of other logic, which turns out to be quite useful for what we're trying to do. So, so one thing that's, that's kind of nice is that the clock that comes in is positive edge triggered. Because remember, a master slave JK flip flop, the, the clock is, is inverted here because the, the output changes after the, the clock goes high and then goes low. So it, it, the output changes on the falling edge of the clock. So there's an inverter here that, that means that with the 74LS161, uh, the output changes on the rising edge of the clock, which, which is, is a little bit nicer for us because we want everything in our computer to, to happen on the rising edge of the, of the clock. The other nice thing that this gives us is a lot of this logic helps us load a value into here. So rather than just counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, we have the ability to load a specific value in using this data A, data B, data C, and data D inputs. So if we put some value on A, B, C, and D, uh, some 4-bit value, and then we enable this load signal, then that value will show up out here on the output. And then subsequently, when the counter counts, it will count from that value. And so that helps us uh, implement this, this jump function, where we want to be able to load a new address in from the bus to jump to an address you know, out of order for, for loops and that sort of thing. And the other thing the 74LS161 gives us is it gives us enable an enable input. And the, these enable inputs uh, essentially enable whether the counter is counting or not. And so these basically implement for us this count enable function. Uh, so this allows us to, when this, when this is not active, the program counter just holds on to whatever value is in it. Uh, but then when we activate this enable, then with each clock pulse, it counts. And so that's, that's built in for us very nicely in the 74LS161 using these enable signals. And so just to go over the functionality of the 74LS161, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's got the four outputs that we want, and it's got four inputs that we can use to load an arbitrary value into those outputs using the load signal. It's got these enable signals that allow us to enable whether it's counting or not. Uh, and then of course the clock, which each clock pulse, if the enables are, are active, then it counts. Um, and then the other thing it has is it has a clear, which just resets it to zero, which, which will be kind of handy, but not, you know, not critical. Um, and then this ripple carry output would be, you know, this is a four bit counter. If we wanted an eight bit counter or, or, or more bits, we can, we can cascade these by uh, taking this ripple carry out and feeding it into the clock of, of, the, next, of the next one. So this chip, the 74LS161, gives us almost everything that we need for a program counter. Um, it gives us the ability to control whether it's counting or not with that enable. It gives us the ability to, to load a value in uh, to implement this jump functionality by using this, this load pin. Um, but it doesn't give us the, uh, this program counter out because that, that we need uh, some tri-state logic to uh, interface to the bus here so that we can control whether the value that's coming from the outputs of this chip is actually going out on the bus. And for that, we can use the same chip we've been using for, for all of our other registers, the 74LS245. And so that, again, has, has, it's, has these uh, tri-state buffers that allow us to enable or, or, uh, or isolate uh, those bits. And of course, this is an 8-bit thing. We're only going to use four of them, but, th but that's fine. This is a, the same chip we've been using in our A register, B register, uh, RAM, um, used in the instruction register. We, we've, used, we've used this a number of times. Uh, so we'll use this again for our program counter.